Welcome to our series, Moving America Forward. Each week we'll be focusing on America's entrepreneurs as they take us to new roads, new opportunities, new ways to fill the gaps left by today's failing companies. Our series will be looking at that and a lot more. So come with me and watch as the entrepreneurs of our nation move into the future. And I'm Doug Llewellyn here in our studios in Los Angeles. We are very honored to have with us today one of the most preeminent lawyers in the United States as our guest. I think you're going to find this to be a very fascinating program to watch. Our guest is Tom Girardi. He is the senior partner of the law firm Girardi & Keese, which is headquartered here in Los Angeles. To give you an idea of his abilities, he was recently named the number one super lawyer here in Southern California, which is a terrific credit for him. To give you an idea of some of the cases that he has handled through his illustrious career, he was, for example, the lead counsel in the Vioxx case against the Merck Drug Company, which resulted in a $4.8 billion judgment. It's one of the largest judgments in legal history. He was the lead counsel in the now famous Aaron Brockovich case against Pacific Gas and Electric here in California that resulted in a $333 million judgment. And those are just a couple, the list of his... Uh, achievements in the courtroom goes on and on. Uh, his law firm is a very famous law firm and it is one that is dedicated to the same thing. They all want to help the little guy. I'd like you to meet Tom Girardi. Tom, welcome. Nice to have you here with us. Hey, Doug. How nice of you. It's a nice, pleasure. It's, it's a, nice to be with you. Thank you so much. Before we get into our conversation with you, a short while ago, you had the opportunity to answer a few questions with William Shatner, and I thought maybe we'd take a second to show just a brief portion of that to see how it went. Okay? Sure. Very good. Let's watch. You are certainly in an interesting business, but take a moment to describe to me exactly what you do and who you do it for and how it helps move America forward. Mr. Shatner, I want to answer that question, but before I do, I want to thank you for letting me be here. It's a great show. Here's what we do. We have 40 lawyers, we have 30 law clerks, we have a terrific staff, and we're interested in doing one thing, and that's helping the little guy. Giving the guy a voice who's been harmed, who otherwise wouldn't have a voice. And that's what we devote 100% of our time to. And I believe that's how we keep America moving forward. You know, Tom, it's very interesting. You told William Shatner that basically what you guys do is help the little guy. When you say that, what do you mean? You know what, Doug, what we're trying to say is we're trying to move America forward. If those people who've been harmed that don't have a voice and they're up against the toughest corporations in America, America's not going to move forward. If people have been harmed due to the bad conduct of somebody, they have to have the right to go forward and they have to have the ability to be able to tell their story properly in a courtroom. So in effect, what you're saying is you help the people who normally can't go to a lawyer or a law firm that demands X number of dollars, and in some of these cases, it would be a lot of money up front in order to take their case. Mostly, these are contingency cases you guys take on, right? You know, they're all contingency cases. We either have to produce right. or we don't get paid. And either we help that client financially or we don't get anything. And these are people who have been harmed in one way or another by big business or some other organization. They've been harmed by big business and bad conduct. That's what they've been harmed by. Uh, Doug, it's a great job I have. I really mean it. Well, you're so effective at doing it. Obviously, you are one of the, one of the truly top trial lawyers in the United States. I want to get into what you think gives you that ability. But let me go through a couple of other questions first. What do you think are the problems with our justice system today that makes it so difficult for the little guy to get help? The primary problem is cost. You know, these cases cost a fortune. Uh, obviously, most of these clients who've been already harmed massively aren't able to write checks to do the costs and so forth to get through things. Right. So the cost is huge. Also, the long court delays are huge. Uh, the guy is killed. He leaves a wife and three little kids. Those people need some immediate, they, they need something immediate. They need it now. Right. Exactly. And sometimes these, the court system gets longer and longer. So that's another very serious problem. Because those cases can drag on for years. They can. And, but the problem is immediate. 
so that's the that's the real difficulty. The other thing about your firm, as I understand it, is you're willing to take on a case. And it, let me ask you, let me put the question to you: What decision do you use when you're trying to decide whether to take a case on or not? You know, uh, good lawyers have to spend some real good work to decide whether to take on a case or not. Right. So you, we have to find out if it's a drug case. Has this drug been implicated? Are there studies out there which show the drug can cause this, et cetera? So a lot of times you have to put a lot of money into the case just to make sure the client really has a case. Because nothing is worse than having a client led down some garden path that ends in disaster. They're entitled to that information early in the game. So you're willing to put the money up. And sometimes it can be a lot of money before you decide to even take the case. Of course. But that's the only right way to do it. And I mean, we're talking, uh, it could be a million dollars that you invest. Sure, and some of these drug cases that we've been against the drug companies on, the firm has had as much as $14 million of our own money into the case for experts and so forth. Yeah. You know, you, you talk about drug cases. You handled the Vioxx case. There are a number of others. It's kind of like you've become an expert in the field of uh, lawsuits against drug companies. Uh, let me just mention some of these. Actos, that's a drug for diabetes. You, you handled that case. Yes, we're, we're involved in that case right now. It has a terrible side effect. These people, first of all, have diabetes, so they have a problem already. All right. This stuff gives them bladder cancer. I mean, it's awful. That's the ongoing case, right? Ongoing case, yes, sir. What about Avendia? That's another drug for diabetes. That one, I understand, just settled. That one got resolved, but the trouble with Avendia is that it caused heart attack and stroke. And we got some information early in the case. Yeah that they knew it caused heart attack and stroke when they first took it into clinical trials. And one of their people put a note on there saying this should never see the light of day. And it did see the light of and day. And that was and a memo you got that, that had been yes, sent right. to you. Exactly, yeah. Similar kind of thing happened in the Vioxx <coughs> case, didn't it? Exactly. We get an awful lot of stuff, and it's not from people that want money or anything like that. It's from people that say, I can't live this way. I'm part of this company and they're doing these things. I got to bring this to light. They want justice. Exactly. Is what they're talking about. T tell me about <clears throat> Yaz and Yasmin, the birth control pill. Yaz and Yasmin have some very serious side effects. They cause heart attack and stroke. Obviously, since it's a birth control pill, frequently it's being used by younger people. And to end up with a stroke being 18 years old with partial paralysis yeah. is devastating. What's the status of that? Is that an ongoing case? Ongoing case. Um, the Johnson & Johnson hip implant. These things are, are just awful. The hip implant that was made uses metal on metal. Generally, in the hip implant, there's something that goes down into the femur, and there's a ball, yeah. and there's a rubber washer, for lack of a better term, and then there's the socket. Uh, the Depew hip decided to eliminate the washer, the rubber washer. So now it's metal on metal. Next thing you know, the metal on metal is grinding. The next thing you know, cadmium and calcium and chromium is in the blood, right. and the pain is enormous. It's really bad. So what's the status of that? Status of that is it's ongoing. Ongoing. Uh, a lot of things are happening in that case. And you hear you represent these people frequently, Doug. These are older people that have the hip implant to start with. True. The last thing they need now is being in serious pain, having to go back, have yet another surgery, to remove it, to get something else in there. You know, we're based here in Los Angeles right now. There's a case here in L.A. that has, has uh, made a lot of noise, but yet people all across the country have heard about it, about this chap who went to a baseball game at Dodger Stadium and ended up, he had, he had a wrong T-shirt on and, and was attacked and was severely beaten and injured. You're handling that case. No, we are. And once again, what a terrible situation. Here this great guy, young kids, goes to the game. He's a Giant fan, and he went to the Dodger-Giant game. And lo and behold, he gets assaulted as he's leaving the stadium so badly he has massive brain damage and will never be the same again. Yeah. And the problem was that we've developed that the Dodgers got rid of most of their security people and so forth under McCourt, not the new ownership, yeah. uh, to save money. So and so here, lawsuit there. here this guy now goes through life this way without the love and affection and running around like he would did before as a paramedic uh, because of people not paying any attention. 
Well, let me ask you something very, because we don't, we have limited time. What do you think is your strong suit as a trial attorney? Obviously, you're very effective. What do you think is That's the nice, key? Nice of you to say. The key is the cases we have are really good cases. People have really been wronged, Doug, and they've been wronged by bad conduct by somebody else. That's the first thing, I think, that, and the most important thing that makes a lawyer a good lawyer. But you said also that you concentrate on your ability to tell the story and get it across to the jury. You think that's really critically important? If, if you can't do that, uh, as I said, you know, you better be in some other line of work. Because all these cases are defended by superb law firms. Absolutely. Believe me, they know how to I talk all the way down the line. And so the idea is that you have to connect with that jury. You have to keep credibility with that jury. If they think that you're fudging in any way, shape, or form, you're toast. And how important is your ability to read a jury? Well, it's crucial. Um, my dad used to go to court with me, sit in the back with a sweater on, and we'd be talking to the jury. We'd go to the men's room. He would say, juror number six hates you, <laughs> or whatever it may be. Yeah. So my dad's no longer with us. But still, the, the concept of reading a jury making sure that you're doing everything you can to keep them in your ballpark is yeah. crucial, very important. You've been doing this for a long time, very quickly. You still love what you're doing? Uh, it's great, it's great. I'm having more fun doing it now than I did when I tried the case of Keck versus Higgs, which was my first case. A $500 <laughs> case. Yeah, about 500 Tom, thank you for your time. This has been very, very interesting indeed. One of the top lawyers in the United States today, Tom Girardi. Thank you so much, Tom. Hey, it's been very interesting. Nice seeing you. Now it's my honor to present this prestigious award to Tom Girardi, the senior managing partner of Girardi and Keese Law Firm based here in Los Angeles for the outstanding work that his firm is doing to help keep America moving forward. Tom's pleasure to give this to you. Congratulations. Doug, that's really nice. But although my name is on it, there should be about another hundred names on it for that law firm people that work from dawn to, dawn to dusk. And, uh, but I do accept this and I very, very much appreciate it. And the nice things you said is very nice. I hope I can say something so nice about you someday. Thank you very much, Tom.